Hello, church. Andy Lack here again. And today, I want to bring you the third devotion on the topic of anxiety. So far, we've looked at what the Bible has to say from two texts in the New Testament. We looked at Matthew chapter 6, where we learned from Jesus that Christians should not be anxious, first of all, because God is our Father. And secondly, because God is very, very good to his children. Well, then secondly, we looked at Philippians chapter 4, where Paul told us that we are to be anxious for nothing, but instead bring everything to God in prayer with thanksgiving so that we would receive his incomprehensible peace. Well, today, I want to look at a passage from the Old Testament from Psalm 94. Psalm 94, one verse I want to read, and that is verse 19. Psalm 94, verse 19. The text reads, When my anxious thoughts multiply within me, your consolations delight my soul. Well, the psalmist here is struggling. He is struggling with the wicked, the unrighteous that are all around him. These are the people whom he says uh, are the prideful, the arrogant, the mur they murder orphans, they murder widows, he says. They oppress God's people, and they're surrounding him. God's people are in trouble. The psalmist is in trouble, and he's crying out to God for help. What's going on in his, in his mind? Well, he tells us two things that I think can help us. First of all, he gives us a confession. And then secondly, consolation. So notice, first of all, his confession there in verse 19. He says, when my anxious thoughts multiply within me, literally in the multitude or the abundance of my anxious thoughts, my disquieting thoughts, he admits, he confesses that he struggles with anxiety, that they're invading his mind. He doesn't try to hide it. He doesn't try to say, if ever an anxious thought pops into my mind, God, or downplay it, downplay it by saying, when those anxious thoughts come to me once in a while, he confesses that he is nearly overwhelmed with anxiety with these anxious thoughts. See, one thing that we need to learn about dealing with anxiety biblically, that we need to confess that it's real, and that sometimes, perhaps oftentimes, it's even abundant in our minds, in our hearts. We can't seem to shake it. It feels sometimes like it's even multiplying within us. So what does the psalmist do? What can we do when anxious thoughts flood over us like this? Well, this psalmist looks up to God and delights in the consolations that he provides. Look at the second half of verse 19. He says, first of all, when my anxious thoughts multiply within me, your consolations delight my soul. What is a consolation? A, a consolation is a comfort given to someone who is suffering or someone who has been disappointed. So you think of a consolation prize, for example, when someone misses out on first place and they're disappointed. Or perhaps you think of someone consoling someone else at, at a funeral. You're bringing comfort to someone who is suffering. Well, he looks to God, or look at this, not just a consolation, but plural, Consolates, consolation. In other words, in the multitude of his anxious thoughts, God provides a multitude of consolations. And if you go through this psalm, he, he lists the many consolations that God 
provides, as he thinks upon God's faithfulness in verse 14, God's justice in verse 15, God's help in verse 17, God's loving kindness in verse 18, God's strength in verse 22. And, and if you know him, if you know God, I'm sure that you can keep adding more and more to this list. Just think of it. What are God's consolations? His goodness, his grace, his mercy, his patience, his compassion. God provides a multitude of consolations for a multitude of anxious thoughts. We think about God and who he is and what he's done for us. He points us to the cross where he demonstrated his own love to us and that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. He reminds us that he purchased us with the blood of his own son. How can we doubt him now? And when God provides us with these consolations, when we think upon these things, what should that do for us? What did they do for this psalmist? When he thought about God's consolation, they delighted his soul. See, knowing and experiencing God's consolation, they don't just alleviate our anxiety somewhat. They should delight our very soul. Charles Spurgeon wrote concerning this verse, Who can muse upon eternal love, immutable purposes, covenant promises, finished redemption, the risen Savior, his union with his people, the coming glory, and such like, like themes without feeling his heart leaping joy. So when the multitude of transgressions, I mean of, of anxious thoughts, I'm sorry, when anxious thoughts flood our mind and they multiply within us, we turn to God's word where there is an even greater multitude of consolations for us. We come to God's word and he lifts, it lifts our eyes up heavenward where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, interceding for us, smiling at us as our redeemer, our savior, our friend, assuring us the triune God is with us forever. I pray that this text will be a blessing to your soul. Would you join me in prayer? Our Father and our God, when we start to count your consolations, the comforts that you bring when we're afflicted, when these anxious thoughts invade us, God, there are too many to count, and they do delight our soul, God. So I pray that you would pause us, O oh Lord, to look to you, to think upon your character, what you reveal about yourself in your word, about who you are to your children. That, oh God, we might delight in your consolation. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.